As summer approaches, we thought we'd give you an update on where we are with Path of Renewal. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting outside in the sunshine at the Beald, reflecting on our journey over the last year, reflecting that just a year ago, we didn't have any congregations who had entered into this Path of Renewal with us. Actually, it's only January that we started the first set of training, and we believe we've come a long way since then and have taken a bit of time to reflect on that journey that we've been on. We're glad to have shared that journey with you and hope you're excited about how far we've come and where we're going. It is no time for holiday and I hope you've got something planned over July and August. We said at the very start that July and August would be months off. So whatever you enjoy doing on holiday, I hope that you'll manage some of that over the next couple of months. But very clearly July and August are months off for us in terms of path of renewal. The last couple of months though there have been moments for us that have been aha moments when we've struck on things that we think will help us to understand where we're going or to explain that to other people so that they might have these aha moments as well. And we're going to be sharing some of those with your Kirk session when we come there in the autumn either spending a day with them in a conference or an afternoon or perhaps just an hour at a cook session meeting. That will be for you and your mentor to organise. We hope you'll get that organised before you take the break so that you've got that lined up and in the calendar for the autumn. But what we thought we would do is give you some insight into what we're thinking to give you a sneak preview of what we will be saying and sharing when we come out. What we've recognised over the last few months is that all that we're doing stands in the Church Without Walls vision. It's about seeing missional churches covering the length and breadth of Scotland and beyond. And it's about how we manage to achieve that. What do they look like on the ground? And so we're working through that with you, with all those who are engaged in the path of renewal. Recognising that they'll be shaped by the gospel, like by locality, by friendship and by the gifts of God's people. So they won't all look the same. And we have said that from the very beginning. One size doesn't fit all. But what is Missional Church about? A report to the General Assembly said there are three essential elements in Missional Churches. First of all, that they will be engaged in their community and more widely. Secondly, that there will be authentic Christian community and worship. People living Jesus' way and the way that they treat each other, the way they worship together. And thirdly, that they will be making disciples, nurturing spiritual growth. And all three of these things are important. Key strands, all needed. Like a three-legged stool, all the legs are needed on the stool. And what we discerned early on was that the weakest of these was actually the third. And it was that that we needed to work on first. Although we had said in our original material that actually we would work on the first. But you need to work on your weakest area. What we've recognised though is that we haven't explained that particularly well or helped people to make that discovery themselves. So what we've developed over the last couple of weeks is a tool that we're calling the TripAdvisor tool because we're asking you to give yourself a TripAdvisor score on each of these three areas. So, engage the Christian community and more widely, authentic Christian community and worship, Making disciples, nurturing spiritual growth. What we're going to ask you to do is to map out what you're doing in each of these areas and then to give yourself a TripAdvisor score. We're going to ask you to do that with a small group within your congregation and then when your coach mentors come, you will reveal that information, if you like, to your cook session. They will then be able to see, hopefully, why we're working on making disciples and nurturing spiritual growth. We did that with pilot team at the weekend and for all of those congregations the third strand was the weakest or the equal weakest. So we're fairly confident that intuitively we found the right thing but we want to use something that will help people to see the reasoning behind what we're doing and also to say that these other strands are important, not unimportant. So we'll do that when we come and share with your cook sessions And we have discerned that that's actually an easier way of folk grasping what this missional church stuff is about. Three strands that all need to be there and in place. 
In terms of how we take that forward, making disciples, nurturing spiritual growth, we've also discerned that that's something for us all to do, not just for the ministers. It's something that everyone can do. But we can only do it well with a few people. That's what we shared with you, that we need to model our leadership in the ministry of Jesus, that we should not spend all of our time with the crowd of the 70, but we need to spend significant time with the 3 and the 12, smaller groups of people whom we can disciple. But what we've recognised is that there's actually a pattern in Scripture of small numbers being discipled. So Eli nurtures Samuel. Elijah nurtures Elisha as the next leader. Moses nurtures Joshua. Mordecai is there for Esther. Without Mordecai there, Esther wouldn't have been into the calling that God had on her life. David nurtures his son Solomon. And then we see Jesus with the apostles. The apostles who then in turn invest in Barnabas and others. Barnabas who invests in Paul. Paul who invests in Silas and Timothy, John Mark and Lydia. And a pattern there of small numbers being invested in. Yes, ministry to the crowds, but also this investment in the small number. What we've also seen is that that is the way that God started with his people. Abraham, chosen to be a blessing to the nations. God, choosing one. And so this investment in small numbers is actually something which is biblical and should be something which we've been doing all the time and need to recover. But what we've been thinking just over the last few weeks is that we should not just be encouraging you to take this on, but also your elders. And that recognition that every elder can mentor one other and be involved. So that it's not just about what you are doing, but about every being, everybody being involved in this. And we'll share something of that with your Kirk session when we share with them in the autumn. We believe that's an important discovery. It's not just for you, it's for everyone to share together. The other thing to say is that we have got material together for discipleship development. There are two things in particular which we will give you, either just before the summer or just after. One is a series of New Horizon Bible studies entitled From Membership to Discipleship. It was produced for the presbytery here in Lothian. Robin Hill was behind that, but it's material that you could use and use very well. We've also got a series of material based on Mike Breen's material, with a few Lectio Divinas thrown in, just different things that are there, and we will make that material available to you. But we would want to remind you that actually, more than anything, it will be about doing life with people. So a whole lot lined up for the autumn. We are looking forward to sharing that with you. We wanted to share it just now, not so that you would begin to scream and yell and think that there's lots that you've got to do, but actually so that you can relax, knowing that there are things sorted, things to look forward to, so that you can go away and enjoy your summer. Please do. Enjoy your break. And we look forward to sharing with you when we come together in the autumn.